Hi everyone, I'm Shankar Selvam. I work as a software engineer at Meta. When a Meta user interacts with our products such as Instagram, the requests are routed to and handled by multiple different services in the backend infrastructure. These services are hosted on machines in data center regions. At Meta, we have over 20 plus data centers across the globe. And if you zoom into one of the data center region, you might find something like this where a diverse set of services such as Reels, Ads, AI workloads are all hosted together on the same region. We have millions of machines and thousands of diverse services. And in order to effectively manage this scale, we need cluster management system. Twine is the cluster management system at Meta. Let's briefly review the architecture of Twine. Twine has a multi-layered architecture with different layers handling different levels of abstraction. At the bottom, we have Twine agents running on each of the hosts in the data centers, and they handle the container lifecycle. On top of that, we have Twine schedulers translating the job-level operations into task-level operations, and they leverage the Twine agents to run those tasks. You can think of task as a logical entity of a container. And at the very top, we have the Twine API that handles the job level abstraction and the leverage scheduler for task management. The focus of this talk is going to be primarily on the Twine API component. Developers and production engineers use the Twine CLI to perform operational changes on their jobs, whereas automation systems build on top of Twine API to provide higher level abstractions such as auto scaling, continuous deployment, and many more. We set the foundation for all of Meta to interact with their jobs. Over the past few years, we have seen a massive shift in the cluster management ecosystem. And these changes has motivated us to look at some of the existing features and offerings in the Twine API. We'll look at one specific feature called task customization in depth today. And finally, we'll look at the new system we have built not only to solve the existing problems, but also to unlock new innovations in the cluster management space. With that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Cedric, who will walk you through the recent trends we have observed in the cluster management space. Thanks, Shankar. Hi, everyone. I'm Cedric Go, and I work as a software engineer in the cluster management space at Meta. Outside of work, I like spending time with my three-year-old, German Shepherd. Today, I'd like to share with you three trends we've observed in the cluster management space over the years. The first trend we've observed is a lot more automation building on top of the Twine APIs. We've seen the emergence of new AI technologies such as training and inference that are now dynamically creating, managing, and deleting gang of Twine jobs. We've also seen the accelerated adoption of existing automation, such as auto-scaling and testing infra, due to capacity efficiency and release safety initiatives. This has shifted regular traffic patterns from being predominantly developer-driven and following a predictable and fixed push schedule to one where critical automations are managing Twine jobs around the clock. The second trend we've observed is a large increase in the fleet heterogeneity that we manage. Over the years, we've seen a large increase in the number of distinct hardware types used at Meta. And in addition to specialized hardwares, such as GPUs, we found it increasingly difficult to abstract such capacity details from more opinionated users which has led to a lot more customization being required on Twine jobs. Finally, we've seen a large increase in the number of jobs that Twine manages. Previously, most of Twine workloads belonged to long-running services where jobs were not being frequently created. We did see increases in number of jobs that Twine manages, typically as part of new capacity being added to the fleet, such as during a new data center region being turned up. However, with the emergence of AI technologies, we've seen that jobs are dynamically being created, which has led to a tenfold increase in the number of jobs in the system. Twine has evolved organically over the years to serve the wide range of workload types that exist at Meta, ranging from simple stateless services to more complex stateful services and traffic services, just to name a few. As you can imagine, these different workload types have distinct requirements which Twine has had to support. Some of the features we leveraged to support these wide range of workloads no longer scaled with the increased complexity in the system. Before jumping into task customization, let's review a few key terminologies. Services such as Instagram backend 
are deployed as one or more twine jobs in multiple data center regions to meet certain availability and latency requirements. Each twine job composes of subunits known as twine tasks. And these twine tasks run the application binaries on a container. Ideally, a twine job composes of tasks that are all configured in the same manner and are homogeneous. However, in reality, we often want some set of tasks to be configured differently compared to the rest of the job. We refer to this as task customization. Let's look at how Instagram uses task customization to manage its jobs. Instagram uses Conveyor, which is Meta's continuous deployment system, to safely and automatically roll out changes to production. Conveyor has a feature called gradual rollout that if it's enabled, update specific set of tasks before updating the entire job. In this example, we can see how Instagram is using Conveyor to update 50% of the job, which translates to updating the first 50 tasks of the job. Instagram server also uses auto-scaling to efficiently size its jobs. While the push is in progress, auto-scaling system could decide to downsize the job. If auto-scaling shrunk the job from 100 tasks to 50 tasks, as we see here, the entire job is now running the new binary. This poses a significant reliability risk for services. Furthermore, developers are also constantly working on new features and they might want to expose their feature to a small amount of production traffic. They do this by directly targeting a canary on specific twine tasks. If the canaries coincide with a push signal, this could further weaken the push signal for conveyor. We can see how these different actors well, they work well in isolation, when they coincide, they run into conflicts. So far, we have seen Instagram server, which is largely a stateless service, how it uses task customization. Stateful services are another use case. Stateful services could configure each task to be completely unique. They could either configure them to run distinct set of shards, or in more extreme examples could configure to run completely different binaries on each of the tasks. This is problematic because we cannot safely enable features such as auto-scaling on these jobs when each of the task is special, Twine wouldn't know how to add new tasks. To recap, we saw how task customization was helpful for automations to quickly develop on top of Twine but when these automation systems coincide, they soon run into conflicts and are not well positioned to resolve them. With the growing number of automations on top of Twine, this problem will get worse over time. We also saw how Twine was able to adopt a wide variety of use cases over the last decade using task customization. However, continuing to support task abstraction also hinders Twine from evolving faster to develop new features. We saw a huge opportunity to uplevel Twine's abstraction to solve both of these problems. Cedric will walk you through the vision and the new system we have built, and I'll come back to explain how these existing use cases work in the new system. Let's take a look at what changes we need, we need to make to the Twine API to address these issues. Firstly, we need to up-level the interface to capture higher level intents more directly. This will allow us to emerge from the over-constrained setup we found ourselves in over the years, and allow Twine to help reconcile some of the conflicts between these different actors. We also need to balance the extensibility of adding new capabilities in the system with the overall maintainability of the system. This is extremely important given the trends we've seen and the fast-changing nature of the AI landscape. To that end, we've undertaken a complete rewrite of the data model that cluster management presents. We've built a new component in the Twine ecosystem called the Twine Job Control Plane, otherwise known as the JCP, to realize our vision for customer management. The JCP is a staple service that replaces the Twine API in the earlier architecture diagram that we shared. The JCP's control loops accepts intents from higher level systems, reconciles them, computes a unified spec to get sent to the Twine scheduler to be materialized into different task intents. The JCP is in production today and manages over 95% of services at Meta. Let's take a look at how higher level systems interact with Twine using the JCP. The JCP offers a up-leveled abstraction that this allows direct task customization from external clients. 
Instead, it offers structured and opinionated interfaces for higher-level systems to leverage instead. In addition to supporting regular CRUD APIs at the job level, it also supports more advanced use cases, such as partial updates based on a percentage of the overall job size or on the number of tasks. It even supports more advanced, even more advanced use cases, such as allocation-based update intents, for use cases where it's important to target the underlying hardware that any task is running. We acknowledge that not all use cases belonged in this up-leveled set of paradigms, such as the static sharding example that we looked at earlier. And we've worked with those service owners to migrate their use cases outside of Twine to higher level systems, such as Shard Manager, Meta's sharding platform. The result was the tasks were no longer special to Twine. Let's revisit and look at how different automations and workflows now work on top of Twine job control plane. One key difference with job control plane is now Twine is more opinionated in capturing user intent as closely as possible. Conveyor, instead of updating specific tasks of the job, now lets Twine know that, hey, you have to update 50% of the job. And Twine JCP understands these intents and ensures that the materialized intent is in a such a way only 50% of the job is running the new version and the rest of the job is running the stable version. If autoscaling system decides to downsize the job, Twine JCP captures autoscaling intents and conveyor intent and it's able to ensure that even after the job is shrunk, it's rebalanced in such a way that 50% of the job is still running the new version and 50% is running the stable version. This provides much better guarantees for reliability for service owners and doesn't compromise any, any of the service contract as well. Developers, instead of handpicking tasks for their canaries, now let Twine know their canaries along with their intent in terms of number of tasks to canary. And Twine JCP intelligently picks the target task for these canaries in such a way it doesn't conflict with the push and thereby it doesn't reduce any of the push signal as well. We can see how Twine JCP being aware of these different intents is able to reconcile these different conflicts that could arise and provide a very smooth and cohesive experience for both developers as well as automation systems. We saw a broad improvements on automations and their reliability when integrating on top of Twine JCP. And we also saw a lot of implicit contracts that was previously developed outside of Twine was now getting eliminated. In addition to solving some of the baggage of problems that had accumulated over the last few years, the JCP also allowed Twine to experiment with new features in a more controlled manner. For example, one such improvement is improving the way we conduct internal rollouts. Previously, changes to internal Twine components, such as the agent, could not be released with full coordination with all service owners due to the scale at which we operate. However, now that the JCP had direct access to conveyor's managed push intent, we were able to align our rollouts with these managed pushes, and in doing so, leverage the guardrails that conveyor offers, such as service health checks, that greatly improve the reliability of our rollouts. We've also been able to unlock new innovation within the Twine ecosystem. One such problem was that AI inference was unable to efficiently utilize your GPU machines for experimental models. Ideally, these models only required one task to run, but also had to be highly available, which forced AI inference to dedicate two tasks per model. Now that tasks were no longer special, the Twine scheduler was able to deliver a new feature that would allow the scheduler to dynamically upsize the job using a capacity buffer that could be shared across many jobs, thus allowing AI inference to save capacity while still maintaining the availability requirements. Our pilot customer was able to save over 30% of GPUs, which was a significant cost saving. If you're interested in learning more about these features or anything we've talked about so far, please find more details in our blog. This is just the start of what we've been able to unlock with the Twine JCP. We are continuing to work on new features within Twine to address known inefficiencies and improve the way that capacity is being used at Meta. We're also working with next generation inference platforms, such as IP Next, to up-level the region abstraction, like what we've done with the task abstraction, to simplify job management. 
We are also working to enable new integrations with higher level systems to improve how cluster management is done at Meta. Well, that's all we have, folks. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your time.